and welcome to Fully Charged. Each week I'm going to attempt to upload a new episode of the series, uh, both on iTunes and YouTube and every other video outlet. I can get my filthy mitts on. So here's what took place when I had a day driving the Honda Hydrogen Fuel Cell SCX Clarity. Okay, I admit it, I'm very lucky. I've just been given these. These are the keys to that. And that is a hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle. Wow. I'm hoping you can hear that because this car makes very cool noises. This is extraordinary. It's for a start, it's a beautiful looking car. It's really spacious, comfortable, big, smooth car. And it's an electric car. That's all that makes it go along. And you probably can hear this noise, this humming noise now, which is inside here. So inside here, in between the two seats, is a hydrogen fuel cell. And that generates the electricity, which then goes through to the electric motor that is in between the front two wheels that is the drive of this vehicle. It's a very large tank right behind the, the, the passenger seats in the back that is full of hydrogen that is pressurized to 5,000 PSI, or 350 bar which is a lot of pressure. If you think of a car tire, is about 33, 35 PSI. Uh, the tank in the back there is 5,000 PSI, so that's considerably more. They've crash tested this car, they've run it into walls, they've rear-ended it at 70 miles an hour, they've done all those things and nothing happens. Now you can hear that there's all sorts of things kick in when you put your foot down. We're now gonna go on to Autobahn. It's a German Autobahn! <laughs> There's a speed limit. <clears throat> it's quite high, I believe. It has regenerative braking. It has batteries. It has a lithium-ion battery pack underneath the back seats. Uh, because when you're regenerating electricity, uh, as you decelerate or go down a hill, it, um, it puts it into the batteries. And when you floor it, the batteries give it some extra power. So now we're pulling onto the autobahn. Foot down. Windscreen wipers on, unintentionally. <laughs> Trying to find the right switch. We're now doing, uh, so, you, and in front of me, there's this beautiful display. It's very good. It's still blue at the moment. If I floor it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and goes orange and glows big. And now I'm going a little bit too fast. It really does shift. And now he's letting me overtake, which is good. Visibility is exquisite. It is a really nice car to drive. There's no point pretending otherwise. This is a really cool car. You get hydrogen by splitting water with electricity. And all this fuel cell does is do exactly the opposite. It's basically turning hydrogen back into water by combining it with uh, oxygen, and it produces electricity in so doing. I mean, it's just beautiful. The first hydrogen fuel cells were developed a hundred and God knows how many years ago. I mean, it's not new, that's again, not new technology, but the new materials we've got at our disposal have made it a lot better. The question I always asked, I always ask, where does the hydrogen come from? Because at present, this is running on hydrogen that is steamed out of natural gas. Natural gas is a fossil fuel, so effectively this is a fossil fuel car. My argument was always getting hydrogen out of water requires vast amounts of electricity, far more energy being put in than you get out. But hydrogen is also produced in a lot of big industrial processes that are taking place all the time. The best known one is the production of chlorine produces huge amounts of hydrogen. We just left everyone standing. This car is so cool. When uh, the lovely boys on Top Gear reviewed this car and the Tesla, they criticized the price of the Tesla and they didn't criticize the price of this car. This car cost around, so if, you, if, you, if they would sell you one now, this car would cost you around two million dollars to buy. Two million dollars because it's emerging technology, it's absolutely cutting edge, it's absolutely state of the art, they're more or less hand-built by Honda. So I was obviously very impressed with the car, but I couldn't help remembering the reams of tweets and emails I've received telling me hydrogen is the future and battery-powered cars will never work. I believe this could be the future, but the emphasis has to be on the word future in 20 years' time at the very soonest, and that's according to Honda. And look where I've had to pull in to fill up. Guess who is very, very keen for us to adopt this technology? Yes, you've got it in one. This is my first time filling a hydrogen car. Ah. 
that's it. Press the green button. Now it's squirting in the hydrogen. I should be timing this, because of all the people who cr criticise me, how, how can I stop in a motorway and charge my batteries? And filling it up with hydrogen is much quicker. It is. It's a lot quicker. I've used a fast charger on my iMeve. It's much slower than this. So what it costs to fill it, it it's 9.39 euros for a kilogram, and the tank takes approx approximately four kilograms. Four nines of... Nine, nine, 36. So about 36 euros, which is about 30 quid, 31 quid at the moment, to fill the tank. And a full tank would do about 460 kilometres. So it's roughly equivalent to the price of petrol in an economic diesel car. Except there's no particulates, there's no CO2, there's no... I can't think. The list of pluses is very long. But hydrogen does cost quite a lot of money, and contrary to popular belief, it does take a little bit longer to fill a hydrogen tank than it does to fill a petrol tank. Well, that's used uh, 19... I've just filled it up with 19 euros. I'm going to press stop now. And then, let's see... Uh, slightly nerv nervous at the moment. Not even a hiss. Very simple. Yes. Ah. We're done. Fantastic. I'll now go and pay for hydrogen. Basically, hydrogen and battery cars, all the same arguments apply. Uh, I mean, this is hugely more fuel efficient anyway. It's really the internal combustion engine is the real bugger. If you could use petrol in some way to generate electricity without using an internal combustion engine, you'd still have a more efficient system of transportation. It's the fact that it is... The internal combustion engine is just a clunky old bit of, of steam age technology. Pistons, crankshafts, valves, all that stuff. It's really dated. I mean, it's lovely and it should be in museums. It should be looked after and we don't want to forget that we ever made them. You know, it's, 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 it's clever and complex Victorian technology. But it's not what we should be doing now. Now, the Honda Clarity is truly an amazing car and Honda are rightly proud of what they've achieved. But if this car is used as an excuse to not change our behaviour now, today, if it's used as an excuse to not to adopt technologies that already work, I'm sitting in some of it now, then I don't think it's such a good thing. I mean, I'm old enough to remember being promised that hydrogen cars were the future in 1972, and again in about 1982 and 1992 and 2002, and what happens in 2012 will be promised again. Hydrogen is the future, and it never actually comes. And all the time we're waiting for this technology to finally arrive, we carry on using fossil fuels. And that is my main criticism of this technology. It will work. It's amazing. I think it's probably more suited to large vehicles because of the size of the tank, which is huge. You could not make a small hydrogen car. That tank is colossal to give the vehicle the range. No one ever mentions that. The sheer dimensions of it are really enormous, and it has to be built like that to be safe. So things like trucks, buses, ships, fantastic. What a brilliant use of it. I pray and pray that people will develop large capacity electric motors and large hydrogen fuel cells in order to make that possible. But for the time being, I am not 100% convinced that any of us are going to be driving hydrogen fuel cell cars for a long, long time.